Welcome to Module 3, Evidence for the Standard Big Bang Model. This is the third module in a 12-module series entitled God and Modern Physics. It is presented by Father Robert J. Spitzer of the Magis Center of Reason and Faith, and it is based on his recently released book, New Proofs for the Existence of God, Contributions of Contemporary Physics and Philosophy. Welcome to the Magis Center of Reason and Faith series, God and Modern Physics. I'm Father Robert Spitzer, and we're talking about evidence for creation, for supernatural design, evidence for God that comes from contemporary physics, specifically contemporary astrophysics. We've been talking about the standard Big Bang model, talking about our universe, talking about the parameters, even the finite nature of our universe. And of course, we now want to get to how well corroborated uh, the standard Big Bang model is. I'm just going to give you a brief overview. But the main thing to recognize is that this model, this standard Big Bang model, which we have been describing, is very well accepted by most physicists. Uh, let me give you some of the evidence. Uh, we saw already that, uh, that this uh, model was discovered by a Belgian priest, Father Georges Lemaitre, in 1923. He put this before uh, Albert Einstein. He was actually studying the radio velocities of extragalactic nebulae, and he noticed that um, these observations could not be reconciled with Einstein's general theory of relativity under the assumption that the universe was in a steady state. So this priest basically decided, well, why not just skip that assumption that the universe is in a steady state, in other words, a holding still, a stable state, um, and let's assume that the universe actually began as, as, a, as a tiny dot, as it were, and then continued to expand like the balloon we've been describing. Uh, when he made those assumptions, uh, actually he was able to explain uh, these uh, curious phenomena with the radial velocity of, uh, of extragalactic nebulae, and at the end of the day, what Father Lemaitre uh, did was show his discovery to Albert Einstein. Um, of course, Einstein looked at it, he says, uh, he really wanted to believe in a steady state theory, so uh, Einstein said, your mathematics is, is terrific, um, but uh, unfortunately your physics is abominable. And of course, uh, Lemaitre kind of went away and tried to re-verify these things, but Sir Arthur Eddington and others came to, uh, to uh, Lemaitre's defense, and eventually, when evidence began to mount for an expanding universe theory that came from several other sources, uh, Einstein actually did come around and, and uh, told Lemaitre that it was the most satisfying theory of creation that he had ever heard. So um, that was uh, the story of Father Lemaitre. Since that time, many, many verifications of the standard Big Bang model. Remember, we're talking about different evidence sets coming around the same theory, the same set of numbers. So uh, an American astronomer, um, Edwin Hubble, uh, discovered that uh, the universe, uh, in a large-scale universe, was actually redshifting. And what a redshift means is that something is moving away from me, the observer. And what he noticed was that the redshift gets greater as uh, we move back uh, into the past. And that meant that the universe actually was slowing down for a while, uh, slowing down because of the, the attractive force of gravity. Uh, but what he discovered was everything is moving away from everything else. And, and so that was another piece of evidence. It wasn't just now the radial velocity of extragalactic nebula. It's on a universal scale everything is moving away from everything else, again indicating an expanding universe. But uh, one of the predictions that Hubble and others made was that in order for uh, the universe to get into a state of expansion, it must have began with a fiery explosion a long time ago, which, of course, um, uh, Fred Hoyle, uh, who sarcastically dubbed it the Big Bang, uh, the name stuck, and, of course, this Big Bang, it had to be uh, you know, a huge explosion, which would have left residual radiation, and a very unique kind of residual radiation, a radiation that would be almost universally distributed and uniformly distributed uh, throughout the universe. And so what uh, this unique form of energy would indicate is then the clue to the explosion that would have occurred, uh, now we know, 13.7 billion years ago. 
And of course, Arno Penzias and, and Robert Wilson discovered this uh, in the 60s and of course uh, won a Nobel Prize uh, for uh, so discovering. And that was again another huge uh, piece of the puzzle, another evidence set verifying the Big Bang Theory. Finally, of course, uh, there now has been um, uh, evidence from what's uh, called the COBE satellite, the Cosmic Background Explorer satellite, and the, 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 uh, the MAP satellite. And, and now we know, without really uh, any question left, I mean, most, most physicists will ascertain that the, the standard Big Bang model is exceedingly well verified, exceedingly well corroborated by a, a variety of different uh, evidence sets that all come together around the same set of numbers. And, and now we get then to the point of, well, what does that say? Well, that says there had to be a Big Bang 13.7 billion years ago. And, and what do we do with that? Well, uh, we have to ask ourselves the obvious question. Is the Big Bang the beginning? Well, the Big Bang could well be the beginning. There's no evidence to disprove it. But then again, it has not been proven to be the beginning. So many physicists have tried to postulate well, some alternative theories where there could have been a period prior to the Big Bang. And this period prior to the Big Bang, well, it has to have some very unusual properties. Uh, first of all, it, it would probably have to have what's called uh, Planck-like dimensions. That means that we no longer can really have space-time as described by the general theory of relativity. What we're going to need is a, a quantum theory of gravity, where gravity, instead of uh, arising out of a space-time field, uh, gravity would be like a force strongly interacting with the other three forces, the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force, and the weak force, in, in a very, very teeny 10 to the minus 33 centimeters you know, or less uh, dimension of the universe. So it's a very unusual kind of physics to begin with. So, so that's one thing. And, and once you have that quantum gravitational um, uh, you know, uh, 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 theory kind of defining your universe, all kinds of other things could happen. So you could have, for example, a bouncing universe where the universe expands and then contracts and expands and contracts. Well, if the universe expanded and contracted forever, well, maybe then the Big Bang is just the latest explosion that gives rise to an expansion. And, of course, that in turn uh, would have been preceded by maybe an infinite number of expansions and contractions. So maybe the universe really is an infinite uh, uh, age, an infinite number of years old. Or, or possibly it could have had some kind of quantum gravitational period that would have lasted forever. Or perhaps there was higher dimensional bouncing. Or maybe we're in a multiverse. And a multiverse is where our universe is one little bubble universe or pocket universe that, of course, is, is situated among all kinds of other bubble universes in this gigantic multiverse where all of the space is expanding between universes and, and we're just a little bubble universe in the midst of many trillions of universes that may have been eternally inflating. Or perhaps the bouncing was in higher dimensional space, what some string theorists call brains. Well, the interesting thing is that even with the postulation of every single one of these pre-Big Bang theories, every one of them has to have a beginning. And what we're going to be looking at in the next several episodes, the next several modules, is we're going to be looking at, well, what is the evidence for the beginning of all of these pre-Big Bang uh, scenarios, all of these very hypothetical, very speculative pre-Big Bang scenarios. And we're going to see that the evidence types combine into three. We're going to look at evidence for a beginning from the law of entropy, evidence for a beginning from space-time geometry, and evidence for design from anthropic coincidences. More on all of this 
in our next episodes. To learn more about this series and the Magis Center of Reason and Faith, please visit www.magisreasonfaith.org. That is www.magisreasonfaith.org. Dot o-r-g. You may purchase Father Spitzer's book on this subject, New Proofs for the Existence of God, Contributions of Contemporary Physics and Philosophy, on the website or through Amazon.com.